some of that has to do with actually wanting to increase your lactate levels. So in, instead of this lactate threshold training that we were talking about, this zone two sort of going, you know, right below the, the lactate threshold, which I guess is defined various, you know, ways um, depending on who, who you're or what you're reading or who is doing it. But um, the lactate shuttle theory, uh, George Brooks proposed this, you know, it's not a theory anymore. So it kind of, the name kind of, <laughs> it's a little out of date, but um, can you talk just kind of briefly about the lactate shuttle theory and maybe like where the brain comes in? Uh, sure. So, you know, the lactate uh, shuttle theory or uh, lactate, you know, many of us, uh, if you look back at your textbooks, you learned that lactate was this metabolic waste product, end product, and it's, it's just a metabolite like, like anything else. And it can be a, an extremely valuable fuel. And we know that and there's elegant studies, including from Dr. Brooks and others, to show that, you know, first of all, uh, skeletal muscle can produce lactate under fully aerobic conditions. So there's always some lactate production happening. And certainly during more intensive exercise where we produce uh, lactate inside the muscles, it can be released from active skeletal muscle. It can circulate to other places like the heart like the liver, like the brain, uh, but certainly in heart, heart can be a big consumer of lactate. And so it takes up that lactate, can convert it back to glucose and then utilize it uh, during exercise. And so this is the idea of cell to cell or inter-organ lactate exchange. And I think that's very well established uh, now. Uh, like you, and you would be far ahead of me, but I'm, I'm following this area with, with immense interest. I have some colleagues at, at McMaster who are you know, both from a cognitive psychology standpoint and also more a hardcore uh, you know, neurophysiology standpoint. We're engaged in some collaborative research with them, but generally looking at this question of physical activity and brain health and probing the role of intensity uh, there. So, you know, my, uh, I, I, my understanding is mainly based on talking to my colleagues, trying to read reviews of, of some of this research. And my, my sense is, uh, you know, very well-established uh, potential mechanisms now from some of the animal studies. Uh, and, and the human data is uh, certainly uh, intriguing, uh, but, you know, that link between lactate, BDNF, uh, absolutely there appears to be uh, a role for intensity there in terms of higher intensities, the better uh, in, in terms of, you know, potential BDNF, bathing the brain, some of these outcomes associated with neurogen neurogenesis. Yeah, I, it's the lactate, um, and we can talk about measuring it, but it's interesting because uh, I do measure mine. I do the finger prick, and I'm uh, my workouts, I'm, I'm like trying to go higher for my lactate. You know, and I've read a lot of studies. For me, I'm very interested in neurodegenerative disease. Um, there's, on, bo on both sides of my family, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So to me, I'm like, I need to really focus on brain health. And um, so looking at the studies on lactate and, um, you know, even infusing lactate into humans, it increases BDNF, just infusing it. And I'm like, oh, I, I get these levels from my really all out hard workouts. Like this is, this is great. Um, but also I feel really good. So I start my day with, including today, um, most, most days, um, you know, at least five days a week, I'm doing a and we'll, I want to talk about protocols, but I'm doing like a 10 minute, you know, Tabata. So, so I'm doing um, two back to back Tabatas. Actually, so it's two back to back Tabatas, and then I have there's some, you know, minute minute warm up and a minute cool down. I actually don't. I use them more for. I'm actually still going hard like half the time, and then I like cool down after that minute. So I like at the end I go an all out minute after my two back to back Tabatas, and then I'm like, and then I cool down. But, um, you know, I do this for my brain. I feel amazing. And there's actually science showing that executive function is improved. And it totally correlates, and this is in humans, with lactate after high-intensity exercise. And it doesn't correlate with anything else, you know, glucose, like nothing. It's, it's specific to the lactate. And uh, like you said, it's a growing area of, of research. Um, I'm particularly interested in it. Like, I for sure notice a difference in, in terms of like, if I go hard, like I feel better, I feel smarter, I'm like more on task, you know? So for me, it's a very important part of my protocol. And um, I do think there's a lot of benefits for the brain. So um, I'll have to be in touch with some of your, your colleagues at McMaster 
because uh, I love sharing studies and stuff that I find and learning what you know what other people are doing as well. And so the and maybe there's data out there on this, but the, you know the the scientist in me is innately curious around things like I you know maybe now there's really really good dose response stuff in terms of exercise dose and BDNF increase and some of these other measures, but you know so for example is short sharp large changes in lactate better than prolonged moderate levels of lactate. Yes. <laughs> right. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. Um, it's not lactate that, I, that I've that i looked into, but I've looked into blood flow and sheer force. And I think this is a very, I think it's an emerging field looking at the effects of sheer force. And, and that is where, I mean, we're talking about a flash flood coming through if you're talking about high intensity versus just, you know, a little trickling um, and the sheer force itself, at least at the blood-brain barrier, and this kind of, when you were talking about muscle capillary, I was thinking about the sheer force, it, um, it in and of itself, in a dose-dependent manner, is responsible for increasing VEGF and BDNF at the blood-brain barrier. Again.